Well, hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Prehistoric Kingdom Alpha. My name is Swoop there, and here we are in the final episode of the Desert Mini Park, the tour. I am just in the car park outside the entranceway here and about to take you through the entrance into the park and do a quick tour. We do not have first person view yet, unfortunately, so I'll do my best to show you with the, uh, I guess, the movement tools that I do have. So let's just say we've parked our car and then we're walking along the footpath here. I'm gonna go down across here and into the entranceway. So this is the first building that I built in this park. I modeled it off a building that I found online. I'll pop that in right here for you to see. And then inside here, you'll have to imagine that it's filled with kind of like, I don't know, some shop things some things that you could purchase. Uh, this is where you would come and buy your tickets. You also need to use your imagination that this is kind of blocked off and maybe there are a couple of ticket booths for busier days or events where they are letting lots of people in at once. And so if you are unable to walk up the stairs, you'd come up this little ramp here. Otherwise, you just wander on through in the door buy your ticket say hello to the people and then walk back through this way you can walk through and come down the stairs here or you can also come down the ramp on that side so we'll just zoom around it is tricky without a first person view to actually make the movements really smooth so when you come out of the entrance this is what you are greeted with first you've got this water feature down here some garden beds in front of you and then you have the kind of open air restaurant or cafe area there are some toilets in here around the side and then just here to our left is a little staff entrance so we are going to first of all we could head to the right and explore the right hand side of the park or we could go i guess up here to the hyena don and then turn right or we could go straight ahead the first thing we are going to do is we are going to head straight ahead i'll take you to the staff areas a little bit later so let's say you've just arrived you're not really feeling hungry yet you might grab a drink or something and then you'd walk on through there'd be lots of crowds around and this is the first habitat that you would come to this is the protoceratops habitat and someone asked me the other day im, im, uh, someone asked me the other day during my stream what was the dinosaur that I was really looking forward to seeing and it really is the protoceratops I'm really looking forward to small little dinosaurs so you come into this viewing area I still like the two I guess windows on each side and then you've got this netting at the top to try and let a bit of air through you can sit here and look through and then you come right up and you can have a look into the protoceratops habitat now this is surrounded by a wall of rock so that you can't really see i guess the habitat walls themselves you can see a bit of fence in behind here that's actually the fence behind the staff walkway so in between this wall and that wall there is a little staff pathway that comes around behind and this building back here is uh, for the Dianchiris, so that's in the other side. And then there's actually a building hiding behind these rocks, so I'll take you through and show you. We'll just head into the dinosaur habitat and have a little look around. So they have their own little pool down here. You have to excuse the noise in the background if you can hear it. It is my dishwasher. And then what we can do is we'll just head on up here and I'll show you the entrance where they bring in the dinosaurs. So you kind of have this entrance here, then you have the staff entrance as well, hidden away behind these rocks. And if we turn around, this is where the guests can come and view the protoceratops. And there's lots of space for them to kind of hide, get away from all of the um, guests if they want to. They can hide behind things. And then... What we'll do is we'll head back down into the guest viewing area. There's like a little small implied sign on this other side. And then what we'll do is we'll come to the hyena don later. There is another staff area down this way. So I popped a little rope in and the staff path kind of goes up behind here. Uh, we're going to head straight ahead. So we're going to go on to the Dianchiris habitat. So we're going to head up these stairs here. If you cannot traverse the stairs, you would come a little bit further on down here and you can use the lift. So the lift will take you up to view the Dianchiris. You have to come to this viewing platform rather than that viewing, viewing platform because this one is only accessible by stairs. However, you can come up in the lift here. So we've got the glass lift. And then if you have dropped someone off in the lift, you can use these stairs as well if you want. So you come on up. There is lots of seating around here if you want to have a little seat. Otherwise, both of these buildings 
buildings have stairs on each side. So you've got stairs coming up here and stairs coming up here. You can see that a lot of my buildings in this uh, desert um, mini park have a lot of open air kind of balls and so on or there's mesh in a lot of places that is because obviously it would be really hot so we're just trying to keep a lot of airflow happening now you come on up these stairs here and then you are in the viewing area when I first built these I didn't use any reference for how big the people were so they're a bit smaller than I would like I ended up duplicating it and making two it was originally just going to be one so you can see there's like a little barrier here but there's also a fail safe so if someone just tips themselves over they don't actually fall into the Dianchiris habitat this is the habitat itself it has a two layered kind of pool system that comes around this way and they can kind of hang out in there there is also another little pool down here and then in the back here this is the keeper entrance once again hidden away kind of by the rocks there we've got quite a few plants and so on in here for them to kind of wander about and hang out I didn't give them any shelter which I think they would enjoy um, I think I could put perhaps some shelter in in a future Dianchiris habitat I didn't cover up all of the walls in this habitat either with rock I thought it was quite unrealistic to do that in every single habitat that wouldn't really happen in the smaller ones it's a little bit more realistic so if we just head on in we'll have a look at where the keepers can come in here so this is the keeper building this is where they would bring the dinosaurs through and then you can see that there is another one on this side here and you've got kind of this mesh across here so when you bring the dinosaurs in uh, you are safe I suppose and then if you're a keeper you would walk on through here and excuse the wall through there and then you would be in the habitat so there is space for the dinosaurs to hide away from the guests if they want to come and lay down just here they cannot be seen uh, they can also do the same in the back of the habitat around this side as well they have plenty of space to run around in the water once again the water does have the grates in it to make it a little bit more realistic and the concrete I didn't line every single side of every single pool because that's very labor intensive and it is only alpha I'll be a little bit more finicky when we come to the early access release so you can see there's the grates in the bottom there where they would drain it out to I guess kind of scrub out the pools if they needed to all right we'll head back through into the viewing area that we were not in before so here is the lift platform so the lift would come on up and you'd be able to get out there I'm going to head down these stairs which I just created in my latest stream a little bit of seating and then you come on around here so you kind of have this view out towards the lake here and then you are greeted with this huge big building in the background here and you'll need to go for a little wander so we'll walk around here and then we will turn ourselves around and we'll make our way along here past all the garden beds and then we have I guess a little seating area where you can just sit and have a relax there isn't really anything to purchase right here um, in future when we get shops and things probably in beta actually I would probably have put a shop just here or maybe even on the inside maybe even over this side to kind of cover up this ugly bit in the background here but for now it's just a little seating area and then you have one side of the hyenodon viewing area so you can come over here and kind of look in here and see any hyenodons running around you also get a bit of a view of people sitting in the hyenodon cafe so perhaps you might want to go and view that or visit that a bit later it kind of makes guests want to go there then once again we have a staff uh, gate and staff building back here and we're going to head into the aviary so We'll head on in and inside here we have quite a few micro raptors hanging out in here if to excuse the z fighting it was tricky to um fix it all up for alpha and to be honest i was feeling a bit lazy given that it's alpha i'm not gonna lie um but like i said i'll be a lot more finicky when it comes to early access probably not so much for beta so you can see we've got loads of little micro raptors running around sort of swooping around in here um, I popped some trees in I really really like how this turned out in the end uh, all of this is mesh we've obviously got glass for the guest part but then above it is mesh and then they have this glass part above so if it does pour with rain they can shelter in the middle and they won't get wet uh, but we'll head on around and we have another seating area like a cafe area this is where I would probably put a cafe over this side and people could come and actually sit by the water and kind of look out and it's very relaxing this area this is probably my favorite view 
in the park is kind of this area with looking into the aviary um, from the water, water's edge. So it just looks so cool. And then you've got all the micro raptors. So if you're sitting here, you could look at the, the raptors in the aviary or you could look out at the water. And so then you can head back around this side. You can see I have put a keeper entrance on this side of the aviary and it has a airlock. So you've got a door on this side. Then you also have a door on this side so the keepers can come on through and we are going to be a keeper and we're going to, well, we're going to, I'm going to go through the wall because I don't want to get too much lower. And there we are. Now we're inside the aviary. Have a little look at you guys. Hello guys. There's a lot of them are fast asleep at the moment. Hanging out in here. Such a cool space in here. I'm definitely going to replicate this aviary in beta. I love it so much. All right. And then what we'll do is we'll head back out the door here. Head back past the outdoor hyenodon area. And we are going to go this way, back down the side we didn't travel up before. And here we are back sort of at the entrance area, but this time we're going to turn right. And we have arrived at the Hyenodon Cafe. Now you can come up the ramp if you so desire, or you can traverse the stairs. We're going to go up the stairs here and there is a staff entrance on this side of the cafe. You have lots of fail safe barriers and then we'll head through the cafe and there we go. We are out on the deck looking down into the Hyenodon Cafe. You can see the aviary in the background. There is a small, uh, I guess, shelter in the back here for the Hyenodon. This is also where the keeper entrance is. So the keeper entrance is on the inside of this shelter here. So you'd be able to look on down and see them running around in here. We are lucky. We're just going to hop straight in and have a look ourselves. So they do have some bedding underneath the deck as well. So that would kind of be the only place they could go to hide from guests unless they wanted to go into their little shelter. I'm really proud of the way this came out. There's lots of dead trees lying around, lots of, um, there's not a lot of foliage in here. There's one large tall tree and then a couple of palms and the rest is all just bushes and dead things, which I think suits the hyenodon quite a lot. I'll head on in here. Here's their bedding and then here is the keeper entrance. I put like a little mesh window here so if the keepers wanted to come along and just look in to see if there are any hyenodons in the shelter itself. And then if we go through here, I did make like some little shelves and things for them to do some any preparations they need to do for any food and so on. And then out here, this is just the back entrance. So nothing all that fancy and I feel like you probably wouldn't have anything fancy in the back you want to make sure that all the guest facing stuff is beautiful and then all the other stuff is just going to be kind of boring so there we have it so you can come and purchase yourself some food and some drinks at the cafe and sit down on the deck and look at the hyenodon right we are going to head out of the hyenodon cafe and we're going to go back to the entrance where we came from past the cafe here or the restaurant outside restaurant and then here's the entrance and this time we are going to turn right and we come to the other side of the park now this side here is the ankylosaurus building and the ankylosaurus has two viewing areas we are going to head into this one first and we'll head to the other one later so you can come on up here once again there is a ramp down the end here and then you head on in and you're actually viewing the ankylosaurus I guess shelter like this is their shelter and you would see them kind of lying down here a lot of people said glass would not be good near an ankylosaurus's tail i agree so we are going to pretend that this is not glass this is really really strong reinforced perspex and it can't be cracked um, by one of their horrific long tails then they have this mesh on the sides to keep the airflow happening we'll head on in and we'll have a little look here so there you go, you can see the guest was come in and look, they can hang out here and they've got their shelter. And then the rest of their habitat is similar to the rest of the habitats in the park really. You've got sort of areas where they can go to be away from guest view if they want. There's a staff building in the back where they would bring the dinosaurs in, a lined pool and then there is a second viewing area over this side in case they are kind of over this side of the habitat or in the water and you would like a better view. So we're not going to go there just yet though. We're going to head back through here and down into this side. So we're going to head this way first and then we'll come back past the oviraptor habitat after. 
So onwards and upwards, guys, we are heading to the Daedon habitat next. So you've got your ramp, you've got your stairs. Then here you have, this is the staff entrance to the oviraptors. It was a little bit of an awkward space, so I made it into the entrance. And then we have the Daedon habitat. So you come on up, you kind of have this cool ceiling on this building. It's hard to see, but I really liked how it turned out. And then this is way too tall to throw yourself over. So I didn't put any safety barriers. Unless someone actually was to lift themselves up, you wouldn't be able to jump over there. Uh, and then here we go. Here's the Daedon habitat. They've got their little shelter or shade sail in the back. They've got some water at the front. And then largely it is just reeds and bushes, one tree. Uh, and some dead trees. This is the staff entrance, missing a door, still missing a door. It's been missing a door for weeks. Uh, pretty simple habitat, this one. There's nothing too much to show you in here, but we always pop round so that you can see what the Daedon can see. So the Daedon would be able to see kind of people looking through here and they don't, I didn't really give them any way to get away from guests, which is a bit sad for them, but maybe in future episodes, I'll think more about that type of stuff for all of the prehistoric creatures. Okay, and we're going to head back on down. We've headed around to the other Ankylosaurus viewing area. So this is the other side of the Ankylosaurus habitat. There is another dinosaur habitat this way, and this is another staff entrance here. So this is a big kind of makeshift seat that people can kind of sit on a big shared seat and you can sit here and have a look into the ankylosaurus habitat if they are just here in front of you lucky you um, you can also if you look from this side here you'd be able to tell if they were in their shelter and you'd pop around here and have a better view of them on this side but i think in the end i think this turned out quite nicely um, i don't think it needs any supports because it's not very long so architecturally that area should be fine all right now we're going to head into this habitat this is for the gallimimus now you can walk up in here and you will have a view on either side of you of the habitat this is the grate down here and then the building itself is situated in the water so the gallimimus wouldn't probably be running through the water constantly um, but you would come along here and then you would, excuse all of the ways that I have to move this camera, you would head into the viewing area, which is here. So you have small little windows on each side on, in this one and then a big open window here. This is the most open part of the Gallimimus habitat. So they'd probably spend a lot of time sort of running up and down here because they do like to run around. I had lots of people tell me that it wasn't big enough and I did end up making it a lot bigger than it was. Just got some small planters in here to make it less boring. Lots of mesh to let air through. You've got lots of windows for people to be able to see the Gallimimus and then you have another big window on this side there is a keeper building on this side that I haven't covered up heaps uh, and then you will see these windows here are actually a lot lower down than the other windows this is sort of meant to be where the kids can come and look through and they have their own kind of viewing area and then there's another large window here so there you go this is kind of more of an immersive experience this one you'd come and you might spend you know 10 or 15 minutes hanging out in this habitat and really spending some time watching the Gallimimus from inside because you're actually getting to spend time inside their habitat which is kind of cool. So let's head on back down the ramp and I'll just zoom out a little bit so that you can see I guess kind of where the uh, building itself is in comparison to the habitat itself. So here is the habitat and then they will probably I mean they would spend a lot of time running so they would probably be running all around here all the time. And then you've got the Ankylosaurus staff area and the Gallimimus staff area. So we're going to head back on down here and we will go this way next. I know that there's a lot of tropical plants in kind of in a few places in this park, but I feel like particularly in spaces like this where there is a lot of garden beds, they would be well looked after, they'd be well watered, they might even be drip fed with like some water from the lakes that I've put in. Um, so I'm not particularly worried about having tropical plants in here. Also it's really tricky when you don't have very many options like we don't in Alpha at the moment. So, you know, we have to do what we have to do. All right, this is just a garden bed over this side. Lots of trees in there. Over here, we have the oviraptors. So this is a small little habitat for the oviraptors. They're not very big. Um, we, I mean, I really do need to put a standoff barrier because um, you wouldn't want to stick your finger in there and have an oviraptor snap it off. But in future or for future episodes, when I build things like this, I will always have a standoff barrier so that people can't kind of reach and stick their hands through but it's a very open habitat 
people can kind of it's also a walk past habitat so you just really viewing the oviraptors as you're walking to somewhere else uh, we're going to visit the big ticket dinosaurs the last two dinosaurs next now but we do have a new little oviraptor i guess seating area if you wanted to see sort of if they were hanging out in this area you can also sneakily look into their bedding area which is under here uh, so they can if they were resting in there you could still see them but it's not as easy to see them so they would get a little bit more privacy okay and then in the stream yesterday we popped in all these garden beds and all of these bushes and things just to make the park look a little bit more lively we're going to head towards the baryonyx next so this is the baryonyx viewing area there are two big pools to replicate kind of you know the baryonyx is a water loving dinosaur and then there's lots of space where you can sit listen to the water maybe make a wish or whatever you do in these water pool things and uh, if I go up I'm really proud of the shape that I ended up making so I made sort of this big tree or planter down here that went a little bit longer and then another planter and then I replicated it but I flipped it on its edge so that the bigger planter for the tree is down this end so it's kind of uh, not quite I mean symmetrical but flipped if that makes sense this was the most horrendous building to make. I'm never doing it again. Uh, because it is curved, every single edge needed to be curved. Um, and I put all the roof on before I put the edges on, which was extremely stupid. So I probably will never make anything like this ever again. It is three tiered and inside the tiers, there is concrete to prevent any water from going into the habitat itself. And then you have kind of this curved, uh, roof as well like it, it's really hard to see um when you are i guess unless you're floating on top of the building you can't actually see what the roof itself looks like so i don't know why i put quite as much effort in as i did but i did guys so there you go all right we can head on into the baryonyx viewing area you're greeted with these wooden stairs here there is also a ramp on this side here and some garden beds inside and some seating so we're going to head straight in and this is too small for you to push yourself through well that's what we're going to say um, but then if you were to fall you're actually not going to fall into the habitat you're going to fall well hopefully you would either fall onto this concrete or you would fall into the water here which is only like I guess waist deep and you'd be on this side of the fence so that's kind of the way to protect the guests there and then you have this viewing if we were a guest we come up here and then you would have this beautiful view into the baryonyx habitat so you've got this side and then you also have this side over here we'll head to this side of the viewing area there is uh, the keeper entrance here this is also a shelter for the baryonyx the keepers have like a little box that they can come and stand in here and find out where the baryonyx are in the habitat to see whether it's safe to just jump in and quickly do something you know a few jobs near the entrance maybe just change the bedding or sweep the bedding into here and then sweep some new bedding out if they had bedding in that area so there you go i only put a couple of rocks sort of around the baryonyx i've got like these big electric fences that they're not really going to be able to sort of bypass and it's quite a nice big habitat for them very water based lots of water i'm hoping eventually we get fish and we can see them doing some fishing that would be really cool you can see at the moment when i drop below the water nothing kind of happens it's just sort of looks like a dry area now and then we jump back up water dry water this is being fixed in beta from what i know so we're going to have underwater um, viewing which I mean we're well, not necessarily viewing but when we drop under the water it looks like it's going to be under the water let's have a little look at the staff area so the I guess the staff area here where the get, where the keepers could come in is kind of hidden a little bit and then you have the baryonyx entrance here if we head back through the viewing area we are going to go towards the last habitat of the park which is the t-rex habitat and that is this way so you head on down more food and drink and toilets if you need them staff area or entrance through this way here so if you're a staff member and you needed to get to the back end of the baryonyx habitat this would be the way that you would need to go and then you come on down you can have a seat and eat if you want and then oh we can already see some t-rexes through here there are quite a few in here because it's one of the only two dinosaurs i actually put into this park so just popped it in then we've got stairs we've got a ramp and you head on through 
the planters are surrounded by a big pillar of concrete that's supposed to be a shared seat so you could come in and sit, sit here uh, on either side of the garden beds or you could come straight in and be immersed in the t-rex habitat so you have kind of this i guess 180 degree view of the habitat itself uh, and wherever the t-rexes are if they're in this area you'll be able to see them most of the habitat is actually viewable from here so you can see right into the back here where they can get into you can see sort of right over sort of to this area here if we go into the next i guess into the far into the farthest um glass area you can see right back to sort of here so if they were back here you could see them wandering around there is a space behind this rock where the staff entrance is and that is kind of where they would go if they wanted some privacy i suppose um, but you know if you were standing here and you could see all these t-rexes which would not happen because you wouldn't have this many in a habitat um, wouldn't you be quite happy as a guest so we'll head into their habitat and have a little look around having a little lay down in the rock lovely there's the the keeper entrance over here i made this one similar to the baryonyx one uh, but a bit bigger and taller because the t-rexes be a little taller when they were walking through and then you have them all around there's another one over here hello and then they have this area back here which the guests can't see so if they wanted to be over this side they could easily just kind of hang out over here and this would be away from the guest view i'm not sure that they swim because can you imagine a t-rex swimming um but they have this big lake it's kind of this huge big lake that's been enclosed by a fence and maybe kind of they're planning to maybe fill in a bit of the lake give the t-rexes a little bit more land in their habitat not too sure there but perhaps that's what they want to do so there we go and if we have a look at the viewing area from this side we've got this is all concrete down here so it's definitely not uh, something that the t-rexes would be able to break uh, they have these huge big electric fences to stop them from trying to get out and then you have i guess kind of these atrium style glass ceilings in this side of the viewing area so when you're standing in this front part you really do feel like you're kind of in the habitat itself and then we step back out and we're back in the cafe so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to zoom out and just point out the staff areas because it's going to take me a while to show you so i'll just point out sort of where the entrance to the staff areas are and how you would access them if you were a staff member and what i would change so if we head over this side of the park first i'm kind of happy with this staff area so you have a little entrance to the staff area here and then a pathway that goes up here behind the protoceratops habitat then you have a small entrance here and another path so you have two separate paths this is for the dianchiris this is for the protoceratops and then this would be like the little staff hub and i would have like some more buildings here and so on when management becomes a thing you'd probably put a few more things in maybe even like a staff i guess a staff relaxing area where staff could come and just chill out have their lunch and so on and then over this side you obviously have the internal staff area in the aviary and then for the hyenodon we have this building here so the entrance to it is here and that's the only entrance i think it's probably unrealistic to have just one entrance to a staff area you probably would want to have another one sort of coming off this way as well but i didn't put it there for t for this particular park and then over this side of the park you have a staff entrance over here so they come in they have two areas where they can get into the ankylosaurus and the gallimimus and then there is a long road or path you would you need a jeep or something to drive it um, to get to the t-rex and the daodon uh, i think in future what i would probably do is I would change this fencing a little bit and this fencing a little bit and i would put a pathway through here as well uh, because then you kind of have the two entrance ways you have this one where it's closer to here this one where it's closer to here but if you did just want to travel between the two you still could which is more realistic and then for the final one the baryonyx it just has its own entrance so you come along here and this if you want to if you were a staff member you would just come straight past here near the t-rexes through this little area and then you're into the baryonyx 
This part is not as realist as realistic and the reason it is not is because there is not really anywhere for you to bring the dinosaurs whereas for the rest of them uh, if you really wanted to that you could open this right up and then you could bring the sort of the trucks in and so on um, and the same with this side you, you know you kind of have I guess a fence or a you'd have a gate back here or on the other side over here and you bring the trucks in whereas this one itself um, doesn't really have any entrance so in future parks I am going to be thinking more about that about how realistic it is for them to be able to bring a dinosaur in I mean really you're not bringing a baryonyx through this tiny little entrance way here you'd need to bring it from this side and there is no way to do that because there's a massive lake right here so unless you were going to drive them all the way around here that's not going to happen um, then they you wouldn't be able to get one in so but we'll pretend guys that the baryonyx are already in there and they're happy and then they closed it off <laughs> anyway anyway i really hope that you have enjoyed this view of my desert mini park i am going to be so sad to see this park go in a couple of days time i'm really proud of it i spent a lot of time on it um, probably cumulative hours almost as much as I spent on my original park not quite as much um, because that one was just huge and constantly crashed uh, but I did spend a lot of time on this put a bit more detail into it than the last park uh, so things are just going to keep getting better and better as we get more pieces things will get more and more detailed thank you so much for tuning in let me know which habitat was your favorite in the park uh, if you are enjoying my content there'll be plenty more where this came from beta is out in two days time and I cannot wait so you'll be seeing lots from me I unfortunately do have to work at the exact time that beta is released which I am really sad about but the minute I get home I'll be doing a stream of the new features the new pieces so that everyone can see my thoughts on it and then I will be ferreting away starting a brand new park I hope you like my ideas I'm really hoping they work and I will see you guys in the next one thanks for your support bye